Hi, I'm Dr. Mo from Spark Sports Medicine. I'm going to review right now the vestibulocular motor screen, also known as the VOMS uh, assessment, and it's something that we do every time, very routinely, with concussion patients, whether they're acutely concussed or chronically concussed. And it's a great exam to give us an idea of the degree of vestibular dysfunction, balance, etc., as well as oculomotor dysfunction, that's functional vision, the way people move their eyes and track and converge and those sorts of things. So it's a very important component, and we can serially check that relatively easily with the VOMS exam um, and uh, be able to see how people are recovering over time. So this is a well-validated exam, um, originally from uh, UPMC and, and uh, some really good uh, data behind it. So anyways, I'm going to start with just the smooth pursuits component. So I'm going to have her follow my finger and I'm going to move relatively slow so I can really see to what degree is she able to maintain smooth pursuits. She does a really good job. It's very important as I go to the end ranges that I hold it for a couple seconds to rule out any possible nystagmus beats that she's having. Um, she's having very nice smooth pursuits here. And then I'm gonna have her go up, follow my finger vertically, looking at vertical range, also holding the end ranges to see if she has any nystagmus when we get to those positions. You can also challenge people more by doing a pinpoint. Now they're just looking at a pinpoint as they do their smooth pursuits. Um, just another way to do this if you think you need to challenge your patient a little bit more with the smooth pursuits, but she's doing fantastic here. So as I'm doing smooth pursuits, I usually will go right into convergence, which I feel like is probably the most important component of this. And as I go ahead and do this, I'm gonna have her follow my finger and I'm going about a centimeter a second. I'm going very slow so I can keep an eye on what her eyes are doing. Are they continuing to converge? Looking at her pupils, making sure that she doesn't have any. And then right there is where I saw her left eye deviate out a little bit. So that would be the point of near point convergence. And I'd have a measurement. So, you know, I, I could look at that and say that's about four or five centimeters in her case, but normally I'd have a ruler and measure that. So, and the measurement goes from the bridge of the nose. So if I was holding a ruler here, I would have her follow my finger in. Again, I'd go nice and slow, one centimeter per second, and she's converging nicely. And then all of a sudden, her left eye is, oh, that time she did better, but her, what happens is one of the eyes starts to deviate away, and the pupils will get larger when, when they lose convergence, and that's your near point convergence. So from there, we move over to the saccades. So I'm gonna have her do saccades here, and 18 inches from the nose is where I wanna be, and then another 18 inches this way and this way, and having her go back and forth with her eyes doing the saccades test. If they're moving too quickly, I'll tell them to slow down so that they get a nice still image. She's moving perfectly and going back and forth, nice clean looking saccades. With these, uh, part of the screen is to ask the patient if they have any worsening headache, dizziness, nausea, or fogginess. And in her case, she does not. Um, and you know, uh, with the screen, a lot of times what you can do is, is if they're symptomatic to begin with, you can get a number for each of those from zero to 10 and then see how much that worsens if you sort of want a magnitude on that. Um, we can also do this in the vertical component here. Again, 18 inches is the number, 18 inches away from the nose, and then 18 inches on both sides going up and down. And she's doing a really good job with her vertical saccades here. And for me, the big thing I want to know is, is, is there any worsening of those symptoms? Uh, to, to go from a five to a seven or from a five to a nine is for me not that important. So we're gonna go ahead and look at, again, remember that 18 inches away from the, uh, from the eyes approximately, and I'm gonna have her do the horizontal vestibulocular reflex where she's rotating side to side with her head and trying to maintain fixation there. And again, I'm looking to see what her eyes are doing, how much nystagmus there is. Is she blinking a lot? Is she not tolerating this? None of which is happening. She's doing a good job. So are you having any symptoms, worsening headache, dizziness, nausea, or fogginess with this? No. She says no, so that's great. And then we can also rotate her finger up and down. So here now we're doing the vertical component of the vestibulocular reflex and making sure she doesn't have any symptoms with this. And any worsening of headache, dizziness, nausea, or fogginess at all? No. no. Great. Okay. So finally, we'll do the VM sensitivity test. And with this one, 
basically, well, the, the key is you teach them how to do it right. I want your feet together, and you're going to go ahead and hold both your hands in front of you, stare right at your thumbnail, and you're going to rotate 80 degrees right and left with your eyes fixed right on your thumbnail. Your shoulders and your hips and everything except for your feet are going to move with you. You want to go about one second per revolution, and our goal is to see if we can get you through 10 revolutions. Obviously, if you get symptomatic, uh, we can stop. Okay? So I'll be out of your way here. Go ahead. Good. And while she's doing this, I'm taking a good look at her eyes, making sure she's maintaining fixation on the target, making sure she's not blinking, making sure she's not staggering, and looking like she's having a difficult time with this. Those are all objective signs, obviously, and they're important to look for. And then I'm going to go ahead and have her stop after 10 revolutions. Any worsening headache, dizziness, nausea, or fogginess with that? No. no. Excellent. And of, of all of them, that's probably the most provocative test. If one of them is going to make them more symptomatic, it's probably that one. But it all depends on where their deficits are, obviously. So, so that concludes the vestibular ocular motor screen. Again, a, a very valuable screen for concussion assessment, one that um, is purely clinical and anyone can do in any setting. Um, you can spend more time on it or do it in an abbreviated way that, that's relatively quick, but regardless, it can give you a lot of good information on whether your patient has vestibular ocular symptoms and also drive management in terms of do they need vestibular rehab, how much oculomotor uh, and visual tasks can they tolerate, et cetera, et cetera.